welcome back to the kitchen. This week we're going to be making a crustless quiche, um, which makes a great breakfast for special occasions. And you can also, once you assemble the quiche before baking it, you could actually freeze it and then take it out and bake later. And this recipe comes from a website called thekitchen.com and I'll put a link to that in the description. Alright, so you saw some of our ingredients here. We're going to be using 10 eggs and we're going to be whisking in some frozen hash browns, frozen spinach, some chopped zucchini, some turkey bacon, some cheese and shredded cheese. I chose Parmesan and also some whole milk. Um, you could actually whisk in whatever kind of vegetables that you want. So I happen to have some spinach already in the freezer and the recipe recommends using some kind of greens, um, some zucchini, just whatever you have laying around that you want to use up. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is cook our bacon. So I have the oven preheating to 350. That is what the instructions on the back of my bacon package say to do. So basically you just follow the directions on your package. So um, you'll hear a noise in a minute from the oven preheating. I'm going to line my two baking trays with foil just because it makes it so much easier to clean up. Okay, so I'm gonna slice open my bacon package and I am doing this over the sink just because of, you can see it's starting to drip. That's why. The bacon is, of course, it's smoked, so it's not exactly the same as handling a hunk of raw meat, but it's not fully cooked either, so you still want to, I'm still going to wash my hands once I'm done with this, um, just the same as if I were working with ground beef or raw chicken breast or whatever. So I'm going to put my bacon in for about 15 to 20 minutes and again just follow the instructions on your package because yours might say to do something a little different. Okay so next is to grease our baking dish. You can use cooking spray or butter. I like to just put some olive oil in the bottom and spread it around. whisk our eggs. I'll just to show you. So I tap mine on the side like this until it starts to crack and then I just put my fingers into that little crack and pry it open like a little hinge. Okay. We need a total of 10 Keep an eye out for bits of shell that might fall in, like one just did, did just now. If that happens, you have to you have to fish it out because if someone crunches down on that while they're eating, that is just kind of gross. I hate getting a shell when I'm eating eggs. Okay, come on, little shell, get out of there. but we should wash our hands after you touch raw eggs because of the risk of salmonella. All right, now we need to whisk our eggs until they're fully beaten. Hopefully you can see that. Fully beaten means that you can't see any individual egg yolks anymore. Now we need to add our milk, salt, and pepper. We add a cup and a half of whole milk 
or I'm gonna actually do one cup because the recipe site says that if you want your quiche to be a little bit more firm and less liquidy, you can do one cup instead. And since I'm actually gonna be using the frozen spinach, when that spinach thaws, it's gonna release the juices because I don't have it pre-thawed. If I had it pre-thawed, I could just squeeze the juice out by hand and then use it in my recipe. But because it's still currently frozen, that is gonna release some extra water once it thaws. So I'm gonna go with the one cup of full milk and then I'm gonna add my half teaspoon of salt and it says quarter teaspoon of pepper, but I'm just going to eyeball the pepper. Okay. plenty of pepper and I'm going to add my favorite crushed dried red pepper flakes to make it spicy Until it's frothy. Alright, and the point of whisking it this much is because you're putting air into it. So this is gonna make your final result be more fluffy once it bakes. Alright, that looks pretty flat frothy. That looks what okay. That looks pretty frothy to me. Let's move on. Alright, these cucumbers, uh, not cucumbers, these zucchinis are not the greatest, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to be washing these and then cutting out some of the bad spots. But zucchini are not in season around here right now, obviously, so... Oh well. That is the risk you take. Right. So I compost that whole piece. stickers weren't really coming off so that's why I'm just cutting them off instead. steam a little better and I'm gonna go for three minutes all right I lost a bit of the footage there but I just added the one cup of hash browns and the approximately two cups of frozen spinach the recipe calls for um, coarsely chopped fresh greens so I'm hoping that this frozen spinach will work out okay since I did less milk and actually I did a little bit more hash brown than what they call for, which would also help make up for the extra liquid in the recipe. And I also added in my one cup of cooked vegetables, which was the zucchini. And finally, I'm adding one cup of shredded cheese, which I chose Parmesan. This container is actually eight ounces, which is the same thing as one cup. So I'm gonna dump the whole thing in. can ever get it open. Not good enough. Oh, that's a lot of cheese. Alright, so basically we're just gonna mix this all together and dump it in the pan. Oh, 
I almost forgot my herbs. So the recipe says that you may want to try adding a quarter cup of chopped fresh herbs like parsley or chives. My parsley and chives are not up far enough yet for chopping. So I'm going to use the last of my dried herbs which happens to be sage. And when you're using dried in place of fresh, you actually don't have to use as much because the dried herbs are more concentrated and the flavor is more powerful. I think I actually did just add about a quarter cup though, approximately, so. But that's fine because I like to have really strong herby flavor in my dishes. And if you have a slightly larger bowl, I would probably recommend that because this is a little bit full cool for mixing easily. Actually, I do have a larger bowl, but it's really big, so it might have been kind of overkill. In case you're noticing the book there, no, I'm not reading while cooking. That's actually what I used to prop the camera up to the right angle. Alright, I think that is pretty well mixed. And when we dump it, it will also kind of get jumbled when we dump it in. So I think this is good. Oh, get out of there. Some people might not like to use their hands, but I find that I can get the bowl scraped out a lot better and faster without that annoying spoon scraping on metal noise. So, as long as my hands are clean, and I'm gonna wash them afterwards too, obviously, I think it works out better for me. So, just spread this around evenly. Okay, now this is the point where if you wanted to, you could put a lid on this and freeze it according to the recipe and then you can just whip it out on Christmas morning or whatever and serve it to your guests but I'm actually gonna bake it now and it's gonna be in there for 45 minutes on a rack towards this towards the middle of the oven all right we'll be back in 45 minutes oh and just a quick note um, if you do decide to do the refrigerating or freezing overnight thing you have to also then thaw it overnight if it was frozen before you cook it. So you'd have to start two days before Christmas. Okay. Oh no, I forgot the bacon. Okay, so. Alright. I just put it in two seconds ago, so it's hardly cooked at all. I'm going to take my bacon and just put it on the top. Just break it up and scatter it. Alright, here is our lovely crustless quiche just out of the oven and you can tell it's done because the edges are puffy and one thing I did do a bit differently is when I took it out after 45 minutes I noticed that the top wasn't very browned I wanted the top to be a bit more brown so I turned the oven off of bake and put it on broil broil is where the heat's coming down from the top of the oven rather than up from the bottom like with baking so I did that and put it under the broiler on high for a few minutes and keeping a strict eye on it because um, I didn't want it to burn um, until the top just got a bit more brown. Alright, thanks for joining me in the kitchen today. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye!